Remember how Sweden decided not to lock down and kept the country open during the pandemic? Well, that strategy may not be paying off after all. Sweden had the highest rate of deaths per capita in Europe last week, surpassing all others. What's more, preliminary reports show that Sweden may not have successfully traded health for economic prosperity. Why is this development incredibly important, not just for Swedes, but for all countries coming out of lockdowns and reopening in the coming weeks? I'm Taha Arvas, and I'll tell you why in brief. While the world shut down in March and April, Sweden bucked the trend. Restaurants, bars, gyms, and most schools remained open and never shut down. Initially, Sweden was trying to reach herd immunity, where enough people would get the coronavirus, survive it, and develop an immunity towards it. This would mean they couldn't transmit even if they came into contact with someone who had it, thereby stopping its spread and ultimately ridding the country of COVID-19. Nearly six months after the first case of the coronavirus is thought to have been discovered, only 7% of Swedes appear to have developed antibodies, far fewer than the 60% thought necessary for herd immunity to work. At this rate, scientists are saying herd immunity may never be reached. This isn't the only bad news for Sweden, however. The number of deaths per capita in Sweden is more than eight times higher than its neighbors, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. This shouldn't be a surprise, Swedish scientists say. They were essentially banking on people who were too weak to survive the pandemic to succumb to it, and the rest of the population to get better. They argue that in this way, Sweden won't experience as many second waves as other countries, meaning a quicker recovery. Not only would this allow the country to conquer the pandemic quickly, but it would also mean the adverse effects on its economy would be avoided. That, however, appears not to be the case. Recent data shows that Sweden's economy has experienced a fate similar to countries that did lock down. Consumer spending is down between 30 and 50 percent, and GDP is set to shrink around 6.5 percent this year, roughly the same as the United States and the United Kingdom, which did shut down. Sweden's lucky in that its population density is nearly one quarter of the European average, and de facto social distancing was always a part of Sweden's culture, with 40% of the population living alone. Sweden is, however, unlucky in that a major part of its economy is export-based, meaning the economic downturn in other countries will slow down the demand for Swedish goods. All of these developments have hurt consumer confidence in Sweden, with retail sales down sharply. For a country that didn't lock down, could Sweden's experience be a harbinger for what the rest of the world will experience? If a country with virtually no official restrictions on businesses and schools can experience so much demand destruction, what will the reopening of countries look like that are still under some sort of lockdown? With millions newly unemployed worldwide, it appears as if a global decrease in consumer demand is about to take hold for the foreseeable future. If we can learn anything from the Swedish experiment, it's that the fear of a pandemic is enough to discourage spending even after countries reopen. Now is the time for policymakers to stay vigilant in propping up consumer demand. Otherwise, the global economy will collapse for everyone, even those that never shut down. <laughs>